us in six, we're going to be comparing numbers with decimals. So on the first one, I want to show you on a place value chart so you can get more of a visual in your head about what this looks like. And we're going to start with numbers 36 and 8 tenths and 36 and 82 hundredths. So I'm going to start with the biggest number and compare those two. In the tens place, we have a three and a three. They are the same. In the ones place, I have a six and a six to compare. And again, they're equal to each other. So I'm going to move to the next place value, which is my tenths place. In the tenths place, I have an eight and an eight, which again are equal to each other. So I need to move to the next place value. Here I have nothing in this one and a two. Well, I know that nothing here is really an invisible zero. And so if I'm comparing zero and two, that lets me know that two is the larger number. So now what I can do is use my symbol and create a, sen a sentence between these two. 36 and 8 tenths is less than 36 and 82 hundredths. Even if I don't know what the name of this symbol is, I can figure out which symbol I need to use because I can think of it as a very hungry duck or alligator. You may have heard this when you were in younger grades. That whichever number is the biggest is the one the alligator or the duck will eat. Okay, and so since 36 and 82 hundredths is larger than 36 and 8 tenths, this is the one that the duck wants to eat, and it's called less than. So let's try another one without the place value chart. And let's compare 52 463 thousandths and 52 461 thousandths. So again, we're going to do just as we were doing before. 5 and 5, those are the same. So I'm going to look at my next ones. 2 and 2, those are the same. So I'm going to move to the next place value. 4 and 4 are the same. 6 and 6 are equal. 3 and 1, oh, those are different. And I know that three is larger than one is. So since everything else is the same and three is larger than one, that means my duck or alligator is going to eat this number. 52 and 463 thousandths is greater than 52 and 461 thousandths. So the next thing I want us to talk about is how to order a series of numbers, either from largest to smallest or, big, or smallest to largest. Sometimes we may hear them described slightly different. Let's take a look at these numbers. Two and 65 hundredths. 2 and 61 hundredths, 2 and 8 tenths, and 2 and 432 thousandths. That's a lot of numbers in a row, and you certainly can do it this way. Some people, however, find it easier to compare these numbers if they write them vertically in a column. So over here, that's what I'm going to do.
It's helpful if I keep them in rows. If I make sure that my decimals stay in a line, then I know that these will stay in a line. When they're not kept in neat rows, it can become very confusing. So that's a little tip to help you out. So I can do it either way here. I can look at the ones, which is the largest, and there's a two, a two, a two, and a two. And I can see the same thing right here. So those are all equal to each other, which means I need to look at the next place value. I have a six, a six, an eight, and a four. And I want to show these increasing. Increasing means they get, right, bigger. So if I'm looking at six, six, eight, and four, I know that four is the smallest of those numbers. And so I know it's going to come first because I want my numbers to get bigger as I go down the list. So this is going to be my number that comes first. If I look over here, I'll notice the same thing, six, six, eight, four. And now I can look at the others. I'm going to put a check mark up here so that I remember I've already used that one. I'll put one over here too so I know. So now if I look, I've already compared the twos and I have a six, a six, and an eight in the tenths place. Well, I know that six is smaller than eight, but two of my numbers have a six in the tenths place. So I need to look at the hundreds number for these two numbers to determine which one is smaller. I know that two and eight tenths will not be smaller because eight is larger than six. So now I've narrowed it down to these two numbers for which one would come next. The sixes are the same, so now I'm gonna look at the hundreds place, which is five and one. Well, one is certainly smaller than five. So that tells me that two and 61 hundredths will come next. And if I look over here, I can see the same thing, five and one, and the one is smaller. So now that I have used that one, I know this one must come next because six is smaller than eight. So two and 65 hundredths. And since I only have one left, that must mean that two and eight tenths is the largest. And so that's how I order them in increasing order. One thing that you can do to help you with comparing things. Everybody is very interested in money, right? When I'm using numbers that have decimals, I kind of think of them as money. If I take a look here, this looks like $2.65. $2.61, $2.80, and then $2.43 and part of another penny. If I look at them in terms of money, it can make it easier to compare numbers together. I hope this helps.